Well, hello everybody. Thank you for joining me today in this tutorial for FCC's Budget App Project. Uh, that FCC means uh, Free Code Camp. Uh, we're going to break this down and make it super simple. If you're not familiar with this project, I'll link it down below for you to check out. Essentially, we are building a budget app, or in other words, a banking program. To start, we're going to volunteer our good friend Bob to be the star of our video. Bob's a pretty cool guy, and he's willing to help us put this challenge into real-world perspective for easier understanding. Told you he was cool. So we're going to build this budget app, and Bob is going to use this app because he got a new job. Congrats, Bob! His bank account has been at zero for far too long, and he's got his cat styrofoam to feed. <gasps> Wait a minute, that's my cat! Okay, let's reset here and cool down a little bit. So Bob doesn't have a cat to take care of, but he does have to eat. So we're going to create this app for his new job so that he can keep an eye on his spending. As with all budgeting or banking apps, you generally have deposits, withdrawals, transfers, and a balance, things like that. And since Bob has no money, he's not making any withdrawals yet. So let's get him set up to make some deposits for now. So we need our blueprint or to build our budget app, let's do this um, bare bones style first. In this video, we'll build a skeleton and slowly put some meat on its bones. First, let's create our class and initialize it. Uh, we only need two parameters, which is self and category. Uh, later on, we can create lots of different categories like food, clothing, auto, entertainment, etc. So this is all we need for now. Within our conductor, we need our self.category uh, starting total, which is at zero because zero is our starting point. Bob is broke. And then a ledger, which we will assign as a list. So fast forward 30 days and Bob has two checks. He gets paid bi-weekly. Uh, which sucks, uh, to be honest, <laughs> weekly is obviously better, but anyway, uh, he's had perfect attendance, way to go Bob. Now let's do some depositing. Uh, before I get too far, let me clarify that I'm doing this project in my language as I understand it. That means that at times it may seem like I'm deviating from the instructions, but I'm really not. Um, my hope is that the way I explain will, will help you understand it best with the goal of true comprehension. And by comprehension, I mean that should you be asked to do this a year from now, you'll have no problem as you truly understand the fundamentals of the challenge. Okay, let's make some deposits. We'll write our deposit method with two parameters, an amount, and then a description that we'll assign as an empty string. This is in accordance with the instructions that if there is no description typed in, then it will return an empty string. Since we're starting at $0, we will want to add our amounts to a running total, and we do that by using the addition operator. Then we will append our ledger list as a dictionary within a list. And every amount we add creates a new dictionary within the list. A dictionary of an amount and a description. Uh, pretty soon we'll have a long list of dictionaries, and that means a lot of checks. Woohoo! So let's create our objects. Since Bob is a really big eater, he's going to put all his money into his food account. He likes to be food secure, okay? Don't shame him. And in the future, he'll move his money around from the deposits he's putting in the food category. But for now, let's just put in our deposits. Uh, note that Bob got lazy on the second deposit and didn't put a description, but that's okay. So let's print out our ledger. If we print the food total, or I'm sorry, food dot total, we'll get an integer of 1225 or 1225. For any withdrawals, keep in mind that we're starting with a skeleton, which means that returning any bulls or checking for funds first will be added later. Let's just get some pluses and minuses for now. We're going to add our withdrawal method with the same parameters right below our deposit method. Only this time we are using our subtraction operator to deduct from our total and in our ledger um, appending we need to show the amount as a negative amount. So we're going to put a dash in front of the number there and we're going to leave our created food deposits down below alone. 
So since Bob has done so well at work, he has decided to splurge at his favorite fast food joint and buy himself his favorite meal. So we're going to need to add our first withdrawal. Looks good. Let's also print out our total. You'll see that our celebration meal has been deducted. Creating our get balance method will be real easy. All we need to do is simply return our self.total. Let's print it out and see what we get. Looks good. Hey there. If you made it this far and enjoy what you're seeing, why not subscribe? I upload fresh content all the time. Thanks for watching. Next method is, um, our next method is actually going to be a little bit more intensive, but that's okay. We can do this. So Bob has decided that he will buy a car because he is real sick of walking to work. So what we will need to do is transfer some money out of his golden food account and into a brand new car category. First, we'll create our car category and then we'll make our transfer method with an amount to transfer and the category to transfer into. And we'll call that category our instance. I pre-typed it out and we'll use a box to slide down for a line by line reveal. We will append our food ledger very much like we append it with our deposit and withdrawal methods. The method isn't doing anything mathematical right now. It's making a record of the transfer in our two ledgers, but that's it for now. Our first line takes our amount, makes it a negative amount, and in our description we add transfer to. And then we concatenate our instance category. Our next line is then appending the car ledger, just like our first line. We append our car instance ledger with a positive amount and then our description of transfer from with our self dot category, which is the food. As you can see, when we print our totals, it's not doing anything to our running total. Let's fix that. For each ledger being appended, we need to work with the amounts so that they add and subtract from the amounts appropriately and update the ledger. So we'll create some space here in our two lines, one above each, one subtracting and then one adding like this. Okay, great. Our totals for each category are up to speed. I'm going to keep it simple for this tutorial and only use two categories, the food and the car. Feel free to add as many as you like when the tutorial is done. Hopefully you'll be able to work with this app and do anything you like. In our instructions, we have one last method to create, the check funds method that takes one parameter and amount. The purpose for this is to prevent Bob from overspending or overeating. He can plug in an amount into this object and see immediately if he's tapped. We will write it to produce a true for enough funds and false if there is not. Let's try it out. Remember how he transferred out 500 from his food account and placed it in his car account? Well, he found this really sweet ride, but guess what? The car is $550. And his mind is a little cloudy about exactly how much he transferred into his car account. Uh-oh, looks like 550 is more than he has in his car account. But let's worry about this later. So according to what we need to do, this method needs to be implemented in our withdrawal method and our transfer method. Let's put that in there. Since our check funds method is a conditional, all we need to do is put an if statement into the methods. Easy peasy. The last thing we're going to do for this video, video is format the ledger to look a certain way using rubber. To me, this is the halfway point on the budget app and what we are doing is printing out the ledger in a special, easy to read way. Since it took me roughly 30 minutes or so to carve it all out, I decided to spare you all the torture and just use a box to cover it up and then go line by line to explain what I did. This 
whole thing can be done many different ways, but this was just how I did it. So directly under our conductor, we type in our wrapper method with just self since we need our header to go first. Uh, we will write our code here and print it. I, I used print, you can use return. I just wanted to print it out and see. So anyway, uh, you can write this any way you'd like to get your third 30 stars and put the self dot category in the middle. And then next we need to loop through our ledger to grab our amounts and descriptions. Uh, we need to display our ledger as a row of strings. We need to turn our amount integer into a number string with two decimals. So it's all strings, just row by row by row of strings. I used a list comprehension on our description because the spacing needs to be precise. We need a len of our description and a len of our amount. Uh, now a string of four to five characters and subtracted from 30. Um, however, because I'm using two trailing dots, I'll need to subtract two off the 30 for a number of 28. This is in the event that the, um, that the description is long and it's cutting into, um, it's cutting into our numbers. So for the string representation of our ledger, we need to left align our description and right align our amount. This means that each row is going to have different amounts of spacing between the two, and this can vary depending on the number of letters in the description. Um, so we subtract the, the line of description, the line of amount, and subtract both of those from 30. And then we create a text variable formatting the string in the order we want, our description, our spacing, then our amount. Print out each row. And then outside of our loop, we print our total using our self.total because that is an integer, not a string. And I've ensured that our total has two decimal places as well to um, stay in line with the instructions. So let's go ahead and print our food ledger. And while we're at it, let's print out the clothing ledger too. So, and there you have it for half the project. Okay, back to our check funds issue from earlier. What if you try to take out too much? Or I should say, what if Bob tries to take out too much? And you get a false. Will it print to the ledger? Now, according to the instructions, if the amount you want to withdraw is more than what is in the account, it's not supposed to be added to the ledger. If we removed our if statement for the check funds within our withdrawal or transfer method, it would add to the ledger like this. Let's also print our total. Looks negative to me. So let's put our check funds if statement back in. Move our call down and see what happens now. Oops, I need to type my withdrawal back in for all the donuts. $80 is a lot of money to spend on donuts, but don't worry, Bob didn't buy them for himself. He wanted to buy them for a local homeless shelter. That's pretty cool. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't have enough money. Oh, well, it's a thought that counts, right? So now that we can see our total, um, our massive donut purchase didn't go through. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for following along and stay tuned for part two where we're going to build our spend chart. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.